Kings Post Game Live brought to you by Toyota. Kyle, Matt, and Kenny here. We're going to get to the participants. We're going to show you the crunch time tape, exactly what happened down the stretch. You'll hear from Mike Brown and the players. But first, guys, let's start right here. The Kings had a shot to win this game. Harrison Barnes misses a three. Matt, describe uh, how you're feeling right now about this, this one. I, I don't want to put it all on Harrison on that last shot. I yeah. think execution down the stretch. I want to say the last two or three minutes. Uh, turnovers, bad shot selection. Uh, obviously, Steph Bell is out with that tee. Uh, Fonch was able to hit a three, but I just think bad shot selection yeah. down the stretch and turnovers was the reason why they lost tonight. What about you, Kenny? He said it. Per he said it perfectly. I can't. I mean, you can't really back. I can't back that up because it was. It was obvious because they were taking bad shots and they weren't being aggressive. I felt like they should have been more aggressive attacking the rim. But they got plenty of opportunities, man. But I like this because the Kings went down. They came down here and they played a great game. So when they get ready to go home, mm -hmm. like Matt said, the momentum probably shifted right now, probably for the Warriors. But at the same time, the Kings are going back home where they play very well. So I'll, I'm going to tell you how I feel. <laughs> when HB missed that shot, it was a punch in the stomach. Yeah. The air came out of me. Yeah. I thought he had that shot, and uh, I thought this was a hell of a ball game. Both teams yeah. delivered some haymakers. The Kings fought back. Steph Curry called a timeout. Uh, usually you don't see Steph Curry making those kind of mental errors, but now they got to come back to Sacramento. Got the long drive from San Francisco back up to SAC. Uh, as a player, do you feel like you let this one go? You yes. let this yeah. one slip? Absolutely, and even though they lost both these games, Obviously, tonight was a winnable game. I even felt like game three was a winnable game. We just couldn't shoot the ball at all. So you're not feeling terrible. You understand now you just have to go one, one game at a time. But take care of home and you're going to advance. You know, Kenny, some people will say the Kings inexperience down the stretch cost them. Do you feel that? Yes and no to a certain extent. I feel like no because I feel like the Kings are a team to be reckoned with because it starts with the head coach, right, and that coaching staff. And the Kings came out, and they play, they play good ball, man. You can't even. But what about like, down the like, stretch, like big cannot, fella? They, what about down the stretch? They played great Somebody ball. had to settle those guys down. They were out there running around like chickens with their heads cut off the last three to four minutes. I, I wish a vet, an HB, or, or a Domas, or even a De'Aaron Fox said, get a good shot. All yeah. you need is a good shot. Yeah. And, Matt, I felt like they, they just were running too yeah. fast, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the, this is a new moment for them. You know, yeah, obviously right. you can practice this during the regular season, but until the playoffs, you don't understand what it's like on the road, last three minutes, and how to execute down the stretch. Get the stops you need, get the possessions you need. If Steph or someone hits a three, slow it down and make sure you get a good set. But I just thought we got, got, got caught into the kind of a rat race yeah, back yeah, and forth yeah, with them. Yeah. Turning the ball over, not not executing on layups, getting shots blocked, turning the ball over. Uh, but again, still a game they could have won. They could have won this game. 126, 125 is the final. Let's get to the crunch time, T, and show you exactly what happened. Blow by blow, play by play. 118, 117. Steph Curry. You can't do that. You can't do you can't that. Do that defensively, that. right there, right? Two men removed on Steph Curry ever. That made it 121, 117. And, and then Clay got a lock and trail. Big time three from him. Clay Thompson today Great at steal. 26. But how about the steal? Malik Monk said, give me that. Off night makes it a three-point game. And then here, Draymond to Wiggins. That made it 126-121. That was 125 left. I thought the game was over. Uh-uh. Here's that timeout. They didn't have any timeouts left. Steve Kerr knew it. You don't see this from Steph usually, no, right? No, uh, it's a mistake. Uh, and, and luckily, it, it almost ended up costing them the game. As you see Fox stepping up here and hitting a huge 28-foot three right in front of Draymond to cut the lead to one. 126-125. Steph Curry, a little push shot from the foul line. Normally money. Mm. No. Kings, one last shot. What happened on this play right here? HB had a good look at it for the three. Uh, let's break down that final play as the Warriors win. 126, 125. Matt, I'll start with you. What would you like to have seen on that final position? Well, I knew they were going to double team him, so I probably would have called a flat and make sure, like, if you so you see where the second guy is coming from, then you can swing, swing, and get that shot. But you knew they were going to double team him. I said it during the timeout. They're going to double team Fox. But it was too tight. You saw Harrison was on top of him. There was no space. So if you know yeah. a double team's coming, you got to flatten the defense out. You'll see who's running at you, and then you got to make a play based off that. Kenny, you like the look at the end there? I really didn't because I felt like Darren Fox should have went sooner because Matt 
called it, they were going to double him. If, if he would have went a little sooner, I felt like it would have opened up a little bit more if he would have just sucked them in a little bit and rather than waiting and catching it in the backcourt. Those are like three, four seconds that was taken off that he could have used to get to the basket. Yeah, and I wonder, because you bring Fox to the backcourt, ideally you want to get him a head full of steam, but the double's coming. Yeah. You got to understand that and know that, right? And you think, you, uh, I could tell too, probably maybe three to three and a half minutes in the game, Fox was tired. Mm -hmm. He was deferring to others. He was flat on his jumper. Um, obviously hit the big shot to, to cut the lead to one, but I know he was tired. But yeah, I agree. You want to try to catch the ball with a full head of steam going downhill, but you just need more space. Knowing that two guys are going to come at you, you got to have more space so you can see where that second guy's coming from. Right. Move the ball and trust that if it's going to come back to you or it's going to get someone's going to make the right play for the game winning shot. All right, so the Warriors win 126 to 120. And what a game it was. De'Aaron Fox, he was masterful in this game. As we get to our Wendy's Fresh Performer, and I'm looking at Fox's stat line, 38 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, Kenny. <laughs> Tell me about De'Aaron Fox today. See, bro, you got 9 rebounds too, man. I mean, obviously De'Aaron Fox, he, he got a little, he was a little slow. But at the same time, he started from the jump. That's what I really like because he's not starting late in the game to where he recognized the fact that he needed to come out and play a good game tonight. Even though I totally agree with Matt, he did look a little tired, but at the same time, he played a good game. What do you think, Matt? He just needed some help. Uh, hats off to Keegan Murray. He stepped up huge tonight. I don't know why he didn't play in the last crunch time, last three or four minutes. He should have been on the court. Uh, Boxy played his tail off. Uh, he just needed someone else. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Sabonis, subpar game tonight. You know, some crucial turnovers down the stretch. Uh, HB didn't really have too much going. Malik was pretty solid, but they just needed one more guy. And I thought that could have been Keegan Murray, but for some reason he didn't get a chance to play down the stretch. Yeah, exactly. Keegan had a big game. We're going to talk about him in a minute. He had 23. But, you know, this De'Aaron Fox we saw tonight, national television, big game, Fox delivered, I think, emotionally as well. Y'all remember, he got into that skirmish with Draymond Green, a double technical. We're going to show that to you coming up here in just a second. I like the fire in the first quarter we saw from De'Aaron Fox right from the jump, Kenny. Yeah, and he came out with a lot of energy. The fact that he was going back at Draymond, I think that kind of set the tone of like where he was mentally. But at the same time, that was a hard hit right there, poking yeah. the eye by Green to Keegan right there. But the fact that Keegan was being aggressive, which turned out to be a great opportunity for him to show that he needs to show up. Hold on a second. Stop right? showing this tape. I want to so. see the skirmish. This is not the skirmish. I want to see Draymond and De'Aaron Fox. There it is. Here it is. It's coming. Here man. it is, bro. I'm, I'm impatient. This, this, hey, this is not PG-13. I love it because we don't see this side of Fox. Yeah, uh, exactly. I can't recall the last time I've seen Fox cuss on the court, yeah. at, particularly at someone. But I like this because it's in him, and he's showing the world who he really is. I think, yeah. obviously, this team is showing who they, everyone is on the national uh, scale. But Fox is out here telling people, no, I'm one of the best guards in the world. I don't care who we're playing, who we're going against. I'm one of the best in the world, too. Yeah, look at him, God, chirping. And after that point, the Kings went on a run. De'Aaron Fox was engaged. And, you know, you talk to some people in the Kings organization. They say De'Aaron Fox won't start the trash talking. Oh, yeah, you know. But once you, once you open up that can, yep. he's ready. He wants that smoke. He's yeah. ready for it. I love it. And so I thought he had a great game tonight. 38 points, 9 rebounds five assists, but the Kings fall 126 to 125. All right, time now for K-9's hard hat. Kenny didn't get, give one out the other night, but no, who you got today? they horrible. Yep, who we got? <laughs> uh, Keegan. Yes. Keegan, man, he came out, showed up, and showed out. So the fact that Keegan was coming in, we've been missing him this whole series. And the fact that Keegan came out and had 23 points, that's a tremendous change right now. 69% from, from the field, that was huge because I felt like Keegan needed that extra energy to where playoffs are totally different than the regular season. So he feels like he can be reckoned with in the playoffs. And I felt like he came out and made that known. Set a Kings rookie record for the most points by a rookie in a playoff game, yeah. which is great. And now you hope to have some carryover uh, for game five in Sacramento, which I'm sure you will. But he came early and we talked about it. He came, he wasn't worried about the three point shot early. He got downhill and saw the ball go in the basket a few times. So by the time he shot his first three, he was in rhythm and he was off to the races from there. Yeah. Yeah, you see him right here. Nice. Big shot, sidestep. And what's interesting about Keegan today, he took seven threes 
but he took six twos. Yep. So, you know, a little diversity in his game. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see Keegan shoot that mid-range shot a little bit more opposed to just standing out there at the three-point line. Not that he can't make it, obviously, but at the same time, coming in is an easier shot. And I think we did a lot better job tonight of letting, not letting them dictate and blowing up our dribble handoffs. Mm. Uh, that's why I think we shot the ball so well because they played that drop coverage.